Welcome back to Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. Once again, three weeks away from archery, then you have the early muzzleloader season, then you have the rut kicking in. Right now, the deer are starting to maybe start loosening their velvet. Most of our trail cameras still say the velvet's pretty good and strong, but it's within the next two, three, four weeks, we're gonna see deer rub, making rubs, doing scrapes, acting all kinds of funny. Now, we're gonna go back to a conversation that we had in Northumberland County in a DMA, a disease management area, with Andrea Corman from the Pennsylvania Game Commission. So Andrea, you do all this testing and you get these positives in certain areas. You create what's called a DMA, mm -hmm. right? A disease management area. Yeah. Um, and they seem to be growing. They mm -hmm. seem to be in increasing in number. Mm -hmm. What's new with those as compared to the last time we were sitting in this park? <laughs> There's always something new. <laughs> um, so this year we have had a few changes. So, I mean, we've had pretty much all the changes you could possibly have. We had a DMA reduction, a DMA expansion, and a DMA creation. Perhaps the simplest way to find out about the boundaries of a DMA is to look on the Pennsylvania Game Commission website. Updated maps clearly define the areas. I want people to understand our surveillance is not perfect. So you see these DMAs and you see the lines, and that is where we have found it not necessarily where we have it. We can't test every single deer. So one, that's why it's important to get your deer tested. But also, which kind of comes into the second point I wanted to make is I am sure there are areas with CWD out there that we have not found yet. So I think it's important whether you are a hunter or not, or you are in a DMA or not, these regulations are really good for everybody to follow. Nobody should be feeding deer because it's just a bad idea in general. And that includes mineral blocks and attractants, including urine. Anything that is bringing deer to a single location is going to increase the chances that they will get a disease. And that's any disease, not just CWD. And this is a really simple, easy thing for people to do, or rather not do, that can you know, help protect the deer in their area and keep them healthy. And management by hunting. Yes. Right? I mean, you, you thin the herd, you, you're not going to put 30 deer in one square mile. Yes. So that, that could work. Yes. And if I see an obviously unhealthy deer in the woods, how can I help? So it really depends on the situation. Our recommendation is if it's hunting season, and you have the appropriate tag, you can take that animal yourself. You then call it in, the local um, conservation officer will come out, give you a replacement tag because we would consider that deer unfit for consumption. If it's not hunting season, then we can't really recommend people kind of take the law into their own hands right. and that you do call it in. Do your best to keep an eye on it. Um, the tricky part is by the time the conservation officer gets there, sometimes the deer has moved on. Um, but, but keeping an eye on it and having as much information as you can so we can find that animal is helpful. So Andrea, proper disposal. You keep talking about the, the brain and the spinal cord and all this kind of stuff. What's the best way to get rid of those parts? Let's say I'm butchering my own deer mm -hmm. or whatever. What's the best way to do that? So there's a few options, and this is kind of where some of those new regulations come into play. Um, if you harvest a deer in a DMA, you can still leave those parts at the harvest location. So you kill a deer, you field dress it, you quarter it, you pack the meat out and just leave those parts where they are. Um, we recommend if you can bury it, but if not, leaving them there is okay. If you bring it home within that DMA, this is one of the new regulations. You cannot throw them back out somewhere else on the landscape. You at that point would then have to throw them in your trash, take them to a landfill, something along those lines for the reasons we just talked about that, I mean, I certainly wouldn't want to contaminate my own backyard. Sure. You know, I mean, I think everybody would want to dispose of them properly and protect the deer that are in their areas. And so that's one of the new regulations. The other one is, you know, say you hunt in the DMA, but you live outside the DMA. So you can't take those high risk parts out with one exception. You can take them to a cooperator. Okay. Now this is something new this year. Um, the cooperator program has existed for the last 
10, 11 years. But the way it previously worked was they were only in DMAs or kind of around the periphery. This year, the new thing is statewide cooperators. So these are processors and taxidermists that have applied through us to cooperate. They use an approved disposal method, usually a dumpster, trash, landfill, something along those right. lines um, that you can then take your deer to one of them. Um, if you home process, you just have to quarter your deer and take the meat out. But that is something that's new that we hope will be an added convenience to hunters while still doing everything we can to minimize that risk of moving those parts and introducing the disease somewhere else. So now back to my question, pretty much started with it, no silver bullet. No. So where are you going from here? We're just going to continue to expand and mm -hmm. study and where do where you think you're going to be going here? So I think one of the, the big thing is, big things is, you know, increasing the areas where we have some of these things that we can minimize risk. A lot of this disease management is about minimizing risk. So not feeding, not using attractants, not moving those high risk parts. And the other thing is we really need to do more to address our deer population. Um, we've increased allocations and in some areas it's you know kind of working and in other areas like 4a it hasn't worked yet so we need to start kind of exploring other options you know we've saturated the tag amount in 4a it didn't sell out the last two years it probably won't sell out this year so how can we make hunters more successful and one of the things we're you know kind of thinking about is some form of extended seasons right we know based on surveys hunters need more time to hunt so how can we give them that to make them more successful? So those are the kind of things we're looking at. Yes. So if somebody wants to read what you've been studying and, and your studies and all that kind of stuff, where's the best place to find it? Make it easy for them to find it on the website. So we do have a CWD page. So it's, you know, pgc.pa.gov slash CWD will take you to a lot of this information. Um, we do have a response plan that kind of lays out all the explanations for these things and everything. Um, but if you're not real keen on reading all those things and you have a whole bunch of questions, we actually have an email and a hotline dedicated to answering these questions. Um, and the hotline is 1-833-INFO-CWD. Um, there's always somebody there to answer questions, you know, whatever anybody wants to know. And we have to say thank you to Andrea. She's always there for us with the latest and the, and the, good, the good and the bad news about CWD. And once again, if you want any information on that, go to the Pennsylvania Game Commission website. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back.